Welcome to TV Burp. Leo Sayers number one single sparks jealousy from old rival Cliff Richard. <laughs> Fred Elliott comes up with a new treatment for PMT. After all Violet, she's taking things easy all morning. What's up with her? Oh, women's things. Yeah, oh, I'll go and get the chicken and the mushroom. All right. <laughs> As Chantel and Preston go public, Chantel's mum celebrates. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruno shows us the trick of driving sideways on footballers' wives. <laughs> How do you do that? Yes, footballers' wives is back. <laughs> yes, and it came out with all guns blazing. <laughs> This could turn nasty. I'd better break them up. Come on, girls, it's not working. <laughs> so, it has to be done. I tell you what, though, Trey's girlfriend. I wish she'd just do a top-up. <laughs> you just do it up, love. <laughs> you just do it up. <laughs> if you were just to do it up... Ooh, that's all. Right. You know, none of that stupid British reserve. Just do it up! <laughs> How long did it take you to eat a biscuit? Oh, my. There he is, Fred. He takes a tiny bite. Spirit is gone. He chews it. The fellow's behind bars. He must be regurgitating stuff back up and re-chewing it. Either that or he's got shelves on the inside of his mouth stacked full of stuff. I'll have a little bit of meat from the top shelf. And some cocoa pops up the middle shelf. I finish it off with a chocolate orange from the bargain bucket. It's under me tongue. I say, it's under me tongue. I've got the feeling that someone must have changed the layout of Dev's shop without telling him. Someone's moved a shelf. Didn't go as well as you were hoping, then. Who moved that shelf? <laughs> it's so difficult to know when to break bad news, though, isn't it? Now you know everything. I just wish you'd told me sooner. Yeah, but when's the best time to tell someone that you're a murderer? <laughs> as you're murdering them, I suppose. <laughs> Away. I'm a murderer. I thought you might be, yeah. I thought you might be. As always, Blanche was on hand with a sympathetic ear. I'm here to make amends, to ask Emily's forgiveness. You miserable scum. <laughs> Things got pretty complicated relationship-wise on the soaps this week. You slept with your son's grandmother, Terry. So you decided, to make yourself feel better, you'd sleep with your daughter's husband. My daughter's having underage sex with your boyfriend's grandson. You could have caught her in bed with Daddy. Is it true that you had a sexual relationship with your sister? I can't believe you slept with Jean. She... Jean? She's not your mother-in-law. <laughs> it's a complete mess. <laughs> then you've got Dev and Sunita. He's got three kids already. Who should get custody of the twins? What would be the best way to sort it all out? There is one thing we could do. What's that? But we'd both have to do it, together, you and me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anything to make our lives better. We could go on Trisha. <laughs> That's right! Get them on Trisha! Good morning, and today it's my dad had a fling with a psychopathic lawyer before marrying his shop assistant who gave birth to twins and then found out he had three other kids by various women. Now, we say hello to Dev, who runs a chain of seven corner shops in the Manchester area, although we've only ever actually seen one of them. Nevertheless, please welcome Dev. Trisha. Hi, welcome. Hi, babe. Hey, you're looking great. <laughs> All right. Okay, now I want to come to the twins. Who do you think the twins are going to be better off with, you or Sunita? <laughs> 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 I 
I think the best thing we can do is get you and Sunita talking about this to work it out. So please welcome Sunita. Actually, Trisha, you know, there's only one way to find out. Fight! We'll see you after the break. Wind problem for Fred Elliott on Corrie. You're all right. <laughs> it won't be for long. It won't be long. <laughs> Think I'm going to be sick. I'm sorry, it's the smell. It's an SLBD. Short lasting but deadly. And new British hopeful for Winter Olympics. weird when your hand suddenly turns black. Project manager for tomorrow's... There it is, oh, pink. <laughs> and there it is, black. <laughs> it's The Apprentice. <laughs> With Sir Alan Sugar, or as I prefer to call him, Sid James. <laughs> You're fine. Once again, it was two teams competing, one of girls and one of boys. And first, there was a little bit of bonding between the two groups. Dune and Alexa certainly seemed to hit it off. All in all, a good bunch of people. Yeah, we'll have some fun. They work hard, play hard, don't they, so? Yeah. Yeah, I've just seen someone over there, I don't know. Their first task was to come up with a name for their team. Here's the boys' efforts. Has anyone got a name at the moment? I have. Go for it. The A-Team. <laughs> yeah, the A-Team, yeah. It's not a bad punt. Name your business after a 1980s TV show. <laughs> Any other ideas, Saeed? Just a quick explanation on the A-Team. With the A-Team, right, the reason why I, I, I mention the A-Team is because whatever task they, they, they take, they, they, they are winners. <laughs> you know, I, just, I, 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 I did have uh, another suggestion. Winners. <laughs> winners. Yeah, that's fine. But what if you don't win? <laughs> I just rub it in. What's the name of the team? The winners. Did you win? No, we lost. <laughs> Anyone else got any ideas? I quite like the idea of combining two words into a new word that doesn't actually mean anything specifically. Yeah, take two words and make a word that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, like take the word stupid and add it to idea <laughs> to make the new word stupidia. <laughs> That's how Alan Sugar came up with Amstrad. Yeah, he combined the phrase, I am a Sid James lookalike, or the trad, additionally, he didn't have a beard. No, he didn't have a beard. So the ideas were coming thick and fast. Anyone else got something you yeah. really believe in? The one I've got is uh, Momentum. Invicta, I-N-V-I-C-T-A. That's Latin for indestructible. Oh, right. Is it? For what? Indestructible. Have you just made that up? Yeah. Invicta? That's Latin for Kent, isn't it? <laughs> OK, let's have a vote on it. I think what we do is we take a vote and we see if we've got a clear winner. Invicta. 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 18. <laughs> just drop it! <laughs> now, how are the girls getting on? In the beginning, what did we want to say? We wanted something that was successful, dynamic, when that yeah. stick. That actually says it. Have we got our name? Velocity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, I can see how she might start to get a bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's just excited. Hi. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> Where did she come from? At 35, Joe Cameron's one of the older candidates. No, no wait, stop. After being made redundant at MG Rover. <laughs> For being annoying. Okay. Their task is to make as much money as they can selling fruit. The girls decide to use all the advantages at their disposal. 
Sticking to their plan to boost sales, the girls dress to sell. Oh, that green T-shirt, eh, lads? <laughs> Whereas the A-team, sorry, Kent, <laughs> decide on a slightly more softly, softly approach. I was wondering if you'd like to buy an apple. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> That's all very well, you're thinking, but what has become of Sir Alan's last apprentice, Tim? Well, we were able to catch up with him in Tim in the Firing Line. And the good news is, Sir Alan has got him working on a project all of his own. Ah, uh, come in, Tim. Hello, Sir Alan. Hi. Hey, welcome back. He is to relaunch an electronic anti-wrinkle device. You got like your first customer right there, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you are what you eat now. And this time it was the turn of Jackie. What have you got here? I have got a cinnamon swirl. Do you think this is going to stop you from getting fat? Yeah, how could a cinnamon swirl stop you from getting fat? <laughs> well, if you take two of them and put them over your eyes... <laughs> When you go past the bun shop. <laughs> the only problem with that is, with the cinnamon swirl, you can... <laughs> oh, look. Oh, look, it's a bun shop. <laughs> I'll have a cinnamon swirl, please. <laughs> Poor Jackie. She got so hungry, she tried to eat the camera. For the past week, while Jackie's been busy filling her face, husband Mark's been keeping a secret diary of everything she's eaten. The list includes... Don't eat the camera! <laughs> What's Gillian's incisive conclusion? In my opinion, Mark, these foods are making Jackie fat. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's not just making her fat, either. Are you farting? Are you asking? <laughs> Isn't it annoying when you get the World Cup mixed up with the Battle of Hastings? Now we'll move on to your next subject, which is history. Oh. What year was the Battle of Hastings? 1066. 1066? 1966. 1966. <laughs> yeah, it's a tapestry of it, isn't it? <laughs> That's Jeff there. Was it over the line? They think it's all over? It is now. Yeah, the Bobby Moore tapestry. <laughs> it's Beauty and the Geek on E4, in which a number of beautiful ladies are paired up with geeks. Hence the title, Beauty and the Geek. <laughs> I don't make the names up, do I? <laughs> Let's have a look at the beauties. First up, here's Hayley. I work in the nightclub industry. I can do a fire show, which involves body burning and fire breathing. Do dance shows, angle grinding. It's so rare to meet someone who does all three, isn't it? <laughs> then there's Carrie. When it comes to reading, I'll read a whole page and not know what I've read about. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's not technically reading, is it? <laughs> that's looking. Yeah. <laughs> then there's Sam. Our solar system. Oh, I can teach you about that. I teach you about solar Good, system. Good, because I thought the moon just stayed there and then the sun came up and hid it. You get the idea? <laughs> They're supposed to be thick. <laughs> the geeks, on the other hand, are, well, geeky. My favourite geek was Ed. He's a man of the world. He's been around a bit. He knows how to kiss a girl. Ed had his head, like, poking round the door. I just thought straight away, I think I've got the biggest geek. Hi. Hello. <laughs> the last time he kissed a girl, it was preceded by the words, Good night, Mum. <laughs> it's been another quiet week on EastEnders. Dead. <laughs> now, the big news on EastEnders is Phil Daniels has joined the cast of Albert Square. Of course, you may remember Phil from the old Blur song. All you got to do is enlighten me into whose fist you walked into and I'll shut me trap. Apart life, I 
cancel my plane ticket on Friday and I was told I, I could reschedule. I can't life! Don't put as much influence over Nico as you seem to think, then maybe you should try. I can't life! The idea with that. <laughs> Phil plays a cockney. Surely not. <laughs> he's only been there for five minutes and already he's having an argument with a Greek bloke. The sperma to the natuvodiu haramizedestin adinatin ayelala. Yeah, the translation of that from the Greek is part life. <laughs> There was a spate of fancy meals on the square this week, with Patrick trying to make it up with Yolandi after his error of judgment with Pat Butcher. And as errors of judgment go, <laughs> that takes some beating. <laughs> so he cooks Yolandi her favourite breakfast, scrambled eggs and smoked salmon on toast. I made breakfast, your favourite. Except there's no smoked salmon. I didn't have time to get that done. Uh, tomorrow, OK? Yeah, smoked salmon and scrambled eggs without the salmon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Yeah. I'll get the salmon tomorrow. Here's your lunch. Roast beef with all the trimmings. I'll get the trimmings tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, Patrick. By far the fanciest meal came from Sonia. She wanted to cook something special for Martin. Come home tonight, please. I'll cook us a special dinner, a couple of bottles of wine. Mm, a special dinner. So, what would that be? Burgundy beef, cocker van. Want something special you can't do better than this. Really? Mm hmm Join your chicken, marinate it in this for an hour, then slam it in the oven and you're done. Delicious. I think you'd like that, eh? Yeah? Chicken in a cooking sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but will Martin like it? You know, just bang it in the oven for about an hour, and it'll be nice and spicy and delicious, but I don't know if you'll like it. What, are you worried he won't like? The spicy aspect or the delicious aspect? <laughs> Oi, Sonia, I don't like this. It's too delicious. <laughs> so come on, Sonia, cook him his dinner. I'm trying to join the chicken. Well, why don't you just buy it cut up? Because I want this meal to be perfect, and your landy said it's best to start with a whole chicken. Well, what's the occasion? Well, nothing. It's just that we've got the house to ourselves, and I wanted to cook my own a special meal. Only thing is, I've been staring at that thing for 20 minutes, and I don't know where to start. <laughs> Here's <laughs> one I made earlier. Let's have a little more. <laughs> That's far too delicious for my taste. Hi, Harry. Bonnie Langford here from Dancing on Ice. Is it me, or was everyone on edge down at Sun Hill this week? Seemed like even the slightest thing could cause a problem. How's your mum, by the way? What? <laughs> Good job he didn't ask after his dad. <laughs> you know, if you do something well, you could win a Blue Peter badge. Well, if you do something really, really well, you could get... a Blue Hi. Peter door. <laughs> Isn't it funny, when you laugh so hard, you actually laugh your glasses off your face. All <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, two texts. And I'm talking, I love what I do. <laughs> you love work, yeah, but think of the future. <laughs> I am the future. <laughs> oh. I've got some new sunglasses, yeah. And I know what you're thinking. Where have I seen those sunglasses before? <laughs> I want to wish you good luck on the challenges, girls. I'm glad it's not me judging. <laughs> yeah, it was the last in the series of Australian Princess. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> and Royal Butler Paul Burrell held a little goodbye breakfast. This is a great opportunity for us to sit together for the last time. It's rather like the Last Supper. <laughs> Judas! <laughs> No, of course not. No, no. It was typical of Paul to buy the finalists a little gift. Um, I found these little gifts in town. I gave the girls each a box set of oh. vintage teaspoons. <laughs> yeah, you got them in town or Kensington Palace as it's known. <laughs>
Then the big moment came when two of our would-be princesses got to meet their prince. A prince, um, what's his name again? I am Prince Marek Światopełk Czetwertyński. <laughs> yeah, how are you spelling that? <laughs> That's a good couple of words to have up your sleeve on countdown. <laughs> consonant, consonant, <laughs> consonant, <laughs> consonant, <laughs> consonant. <laughs> Prince Marek did make quite an entrance. Prince Marek came in the room and he to a fanfare, which is pretty cool. I mean, he gets a fanfare. Yeah, everywhere he goes, he gets that fanfare. <laughs> well, that's fine at formal occasions. But I think after a while, it might start to wear thin. <laughs> You know when you live with a pianist, a little bit is bound to rub off. <laughs> Who did she live with? Les Dawson? <laughs> it's Emily Bishop's old time piano party. <laughs> Bishop plays piano like you've never heard it before. Beautiful dreamer. Plus all the hits from the Brits. Kaiser Chiefs. James Blunt. And Madonna. Bishop's old time piano party. Available at all major record shops. If the OC can get back in the charts, so can I. And Harry Hill takes a look at your home videos next week with You've Been Framed every day at five. Next tonight, it starts in their eyes, kids. Then it's the Dancing on Ice semi final. And who's got what it takes to perform the bolero? You decide from 7.15 with Millionaire later at 8.20.